So b before your WWE contract expired in 2008, uh, you're quoted as saying that being an announcer wasn't working out for you creatively. Yeah. So <laughs> was Mick not being repackaged to your creative liking? <laughs> Yeah, I had the chapter in there, Repackaging Mick, which was actually from 2007. Um, no, I, I, I went in just like one or two days' time from thinking that announcing was something I could do for the next 10 years to being like, I never want to announce a match again. Uh, you, know, you know, Vince has his ways. Uh, he's the producer. It's his product. So you can't tell him to change, but that wasn't a good mix. Mm -hmm. For me, you know, to have, uh, you know, to have Vince in my ear was not comfortable. Okay. <laughs> um, a current TNA plotline is playing off a concussion sustained by Ken Anderson. Yeah. Uh, this is a plotline that doesn't involve you, due to being hit by chair by Jeff Hardy. To a casual viewer, this this might seem fairly innocuous, really, but this is in wrestling storylines one of the most near the knuckle. What with all the, the, yeah. the nature of concussions in wrestling. This is, this is pretty far out there, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it cuts pretty close um, to, to the bone because uh, you know, concussions are a problem in wrestling. They've been a problem, problem for me. Um, I think if uh, I mentioned, uh, I have to admit, I mentioned earlier in an interview that somebody had asked whether or not I was jumping on the concussion bandwagon to help sell my book. And I'm like, you know, I was talking about concussions in interviews back mm -hmm. in ECW quite a bit, you know, and I did get out of wrestling full time because of uh, head injuries. So I've been on that wagon for a while, but we're learning so much more. Uh, I mean, literally every day and we're learning that things that may have may not have seemed like concussions actually were, you know, momentary blackouts, seeing stars, things that were pretty uh, regular mm. in my, you know, in, 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 in my career. I th I, uh, Do you I, think a casual viewer can realize the kind of important, because to a casual yeah. viewer, having a concussion might not seem that big a deal, and they might think it's an unusual thing to push, especially when Bischoff and Flair are healing on it so much, saying yeah. that Anderson essentially should man up. Right, and I think uh, from what I'm told, Matt Morgan, you know, gave a good promo mm -hmm. about it, and I believe that we have the opportunity to really tell an important story uh, that's larger than wrestling I itself. Um, so, so I, I'm I'm glad they're doing it. Um, it is it is a big problem. Uh, wrestling, fortunately, is a form of entertainment that can be tailor made to avoid uh, repeated concussions. I mean, you're, you're, nobody's going to escape the wrestling business, business concussion free, but we can avoid those rapid succession of concussions by just staying away from somebody's head and not having people take the kind of uh, really bone jarring, literally brain rattling types of bumps that uh, cause these things. Okay, good. Um, I know you're quite a Twitter holic. Now um, I'm going to, you know what, I'm thinking of qu quitting cold really? turkey. Yeah. Why is yeah. that? Because, uh, you know, it's, it is very addictive. And I uh, honestly, you know, I, I, I do the, you know, the work with Rain online. And, uh, and that takes up, you know, quite a chunk of time. And I'm not sure that I can justify being online any more than that. You have to live your life on Twitter while you're trying to live your life. Uh, yeah, right? yeah. So uh, honestly, that, that could be the big... Uh, News flash of the day. Uh, the big ex this is even bigger than the other exclusive <laughs> that I messed up the, the EV2 story. Yeah, I, I told my wife I'm thinking of quitting cold turkey and just giving a notice and maybe an explanation. But uh, I wonder whether you've picked up on a recent tweet from purported to be from Joey Styles, where <laughs> referencing what must be the upcoming Raw theme, he says, "What's the big deal about being able to see old school WWE?" It's on TV every week. It's called TNA. Yeah, uh, that's when I, I tweeted back, hey, come on now, Joey. There's no need for that type of shenanigans. Once you throw the word shenanigans <laughs> in, uh, you know, it should be assumed that somebody's not really angry. Uh, but it is surprising to see, see how people interpret words uh, on there. I, I, I'd done something on an MTV interview where I was asked about the stiffest wrestlers in, you know, in the business. And I said, well... 
Vader was probably the stiffest, but because he was like of a different generation, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people out there don't remember Vader. I'll, I said, I'll just say that during uh, Stone Cold's peak, being on the receiving end of his punches was no day at the park. And then said like, he was so popular that you, you couldn't complain about it. You know, he was, he was Stone Cold and they got such an amazing reaction. And uh, you know, there were people, people calling me a baby for complaining. And it was Steve that was like, you know, hey, I was just protect, protecting the business kid, or like, hey, Mick was a tough SOB. If he says I was stiff, then I guess I was. It was actually meant as a, a compliment. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I will. I now that I've said it, I've got to actually leave the Twitter world. Well, that's uh, over here in the UK. There's been a few, quite a few Twitter scandals involving celebrities. Why? Well, female fans um, sending rather fruity direct messages and uh, tweets. Do you, do you get a lot of those, Mick? Never. Uh, now I'm, uh, maybe I should hang on to Twitter and, uh, <laughs> until I start getting a few of those now. I will say that when I was on MySpace, uh, it, that's like it's extinct, you know. I finally learned how to use that. I only learned to use a computer from through meeting Tori Amos. I don't know. Okay. I, I, I got on her website because I wanted to see if the, this photo that's now in my book was, uh, may have been posted on her website so I would feel free to use it. Uh, before that, I'd never actually gotten on a website on my own, and that was when I saw the, the link to Rain, and I, I pushed a button and did the research, and it really uh, played a big role in my life. But uh, I had asked, you know, the, you, you, when I finally got on to MySpace and I had an account for two and a half years, there was a, you know, like well over a thousand messages there for me. And uh, one young lady had sent a photo of herself with very little room <laughs> left to the imagination, you know. She was looking to make friends with you. Apparently, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. good. Uh, just before I ask you uh, a last question about uh, TNA's upcoming UK tour, can you tell us a little bit about your work with Rain? Yeah, I would love to. Uh, like I said, I, I got involved after meeting uh, Tori Amos, who was a uh, co founder of Rain in 94. Uh, it stands for Rape, Abuse, Incest National Network. And that's not traditionally an area where pro wrestlers have you know, made a contribution. Um, these, it always seemed like the natural extensions, the ones that worked the, uh, the, the, not the easiest, but the ones that had the clearest connection would be working with kids who were facing life-threatening challenges, you know, with, with cancer and muscular dystrophy, things of that nature, or uh, service members serving overseas or wounded service members in military hospitals. But in this situation, uh, I really saw that there were not many men involved at all, and th those who were tended to be victims. That This was not a, a subject that many people were talking about. And I thought, uh, I, I really, you know, I thought about it for a long time and and came to see and feel that it was where I could make a, a major difference. And so, I mean, I'll be honest, this, this book's not doing, you know, that well. Uh, but I'm not really that disappointed because I say in the, um, I, I say in the afterward that uh, the journey it's taken me on and uh, the, you know, kind of the places I've been and the opportunities I've had to make a difference all stemming from that one meeting uh, with Miss Amos uh, has really been like one of the great experiences of my life. So for that reason, for being able to go on a show like The Daily Show and talk about rain and for being in, uh, uh, having articles written in major magazines and, and connecting with a group called Jezebel.com, which would have never had an association with a pro wrestler before, has made, uh, has really, allowed me to redefine what, you know, being a success is. Yeah. And this is, is this a direction you'd like to go more in the future after le less on-screen work maybe? Or? Less on-screen work? Yeah, for, in TNA. Well, you know what works, you know, what, what works directly with, with um, my association with Rain, I believe, is this campaign that uh, TNA has become involved with called Eliminate the Hate. Because I, I do see you know, rape and sexual assault as like the worst possible extension of bullying, with the exception of these recent kids in the U.S. who've 
chosen to end their lives rather than endure what uh, they are going through in their in their lives. And so uh, uh, these kids have been taunted for you know for being gay, for either being gay or being assumed to be gay. And uh, I, I think it's reached a point in the U.S. at least, and I'm assuming it's this way elsewhere, where uh, you know that you know this is not a gay problem or a straight problem it's a human problem and I think by being involved in the campaign you know this eliminate the hate campaign that we can help a lot of people and we can reach a lot of people who would not be reached through normal avenues and so it's my hope that you know that we can make this a big a big deal to involve, you know, American football players, you know, of course, globally to involve, you know, football players from from England or Germany or South America could be huge. And I and I and I wrote an article in uh, uh, TNA wrestling dot com where I likened, uh, you know, one guy not being able to go out there and beat out the flames of hatred, but that if enough people got together, you could kind of deprive it of the elements that the hatred needs to survive. So I honestly look at that uh, at the possibility of being part of that in a major way as being a lot more important than anything I could do on screen. And that, uh, that article is on TNA's website for everyone to read. Uh, Mick, will you be coming back to the UK in January during TNA's tour? I, I don't know. I know um, you know Ric Flair is coming back. It's, it's the Who the the Who tour, right? <laughs> I messed that one you up. You can do on a TV. better Who than that. Ah, uh, sure. no, I did it bad. When I did it on TV, I tried to do it, and not good. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. Um, I mean, you know, TNA does stand for Total Nonstop Action, not Total Nonstop Action and Mick Foley. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it might be better if just one, you know, one uh, elder statesman was on the tour. But if I'm asked to do it, I certainly will. We had a great, I had a great time two years ago. I even gave a speech on the bus saying it would probably been my favorite overseas tour because there's just, you know, there's really a, a good atmosphere in uh, TNA. Well, we hope you'll be coming, up, uh, coming back to us. Thank you, Mick Foley. Thank you for giving me a chance to talk about things that are important to me.